Welcome back. You're watching HFO TV, co-sponsored by AMF Capital, the Baljanic Law Firm, the Butler Exchange Group, and the construction firm J.R. Johnson. Welcome back to HFO TV. I'm Greg Frick, partner at HFO Investment Real Estate. Today we're going to speak with Jack Stevens. He's one of our senior brokers at HFO and kind of get a little rundown about the market and what he sees. And now Jack, I know you do a lot of business out in kind of East Multnomah County, Clackamas County. Have you seen much change in demand with uh, statewide rent control in Oregon? As we know, Oregon was the first state in the union to pass statewide rent control because Oregon likes to be first at everything. Bottle bill, statewide rent control. What's your sense with your clients in terms of that having an effect on their investments? Yeah, no, we definitely are pioneers with the first. A um, lot of smaller owners are having some difficulties managing that along with the city of Portland regulations with regards to background checks and security deposits. Which is only going to uh, get worse if this... Only going to get worse in a couple months. It's not really defined. Through. Right. Um, you know, I mean, luckily or unluckily, depending on who you are, our neighbor to the south also put in statewide rent control. Right. And so that hasn't spurred investors from there to stop coming up here. Um, so we've still seen a big push. Interest rates literally just got cut today or week, two weeks ago, depending on when you're watching this video. Um, so that's also helped things move along. So we haven't seen a big dip, but there's definitely a lot of fear out there. So in terms of your stuff, are you seeing in your market any adjustment in cap rates? Or is it because interest rates have stayed you know, historically is low. I mean, I think as we're filming this, I think the 10-year just dropped to 1.6 again. Um, is that offset any cap rate inflation or what, what's your take on that? You know, not so much. I mean, you have to have a true cap rate. Right. You know, the days of having a three cap that you pro forma to a seven and a half cap are a little bit gone. People will still pay for the upside, but they're adjusting for the fact that they're gonna have some time before they're able to achieve those numbers. So from the uh, from a valuation standpoint, it's been more uh, less Putting out in the future on pro formas where we've had to dial things back, I think, for, with with regards to rent control and some of these other regulations. But your true cap rates still have. I mean, I haven't seen a, a rise in cap rates. I mean, we kind no, of thought we would. Definitely year. hasn't been a rise. Um, and really, the pushback isn't necessarily coming from the investor side. It's more the lending side. Yeah. They won't give us the adjustment like they used to, and so it's harder to actually get things done. And so that's why there's a lot more footwork at the beginning of the transaction than there used to be in ensuring that people fully realize what they're getting into. Um, because lenders are actually looking at the books and records and figuring out what it's actually running at versus looking ahead and assuming they can get right. to that number. And, what's, and what do you see in your crystal ball in the next few years in, this, in you know, that market or in the multifamily space? Um, are you seeing, you think, increased demand in terms of investment dollars or? You know, it's hard to say with the interest rates. You know, I think we were on this two, three years ago saying we could never get better than where we were at. And then we right. got better and we were on five years ago and said the same thing. And so. Well, we've been saying for 20 years, take a long-term fixed interest rate. And the people that did adjust right. did much better. Um, so. Yeah, so if there's anything we know for sure, it's that we're continually wrong as are most people. But, uh, you know, it seems like everything's still really strong. Right. I think the biggest factor with multifamily, you've got to kind of strip away all the huge macro things with regards to the economy um, and really focus in on the local politics and how that's going to change things. And then also just if people are still moving here, because at the end of the day, it is a people business. And if people right. still want to move here and still want to rent here, things are still continually going to be good. And I think too, with all, with all the regulations and all the kind of costs and all that involved, we still are going to have a restriction on supply right. of new units. And if you got the continued migration coming in, you'll have the bent up demand, yep. uh, which I think long term. And the other interesting thing I think from our standpoint has been just the amount of capital looking for an investment, yeah. which I think is offset any, I think now commercial real estate apartments in general are now almost looked at like a stock or bond and it's not yeah. so speculative. So you have all this additional capital, which has lowered the yield returns. Yeah. Someone it's, always needs a place to live. Exactly. And but people now need a place to invest. Yeah. And you combine those two things and, you know, people, you know, enjoy living here still. I think it bodes well up here. So, mm -hmm. well, thank you for coming in. Thanks for sharing some insights. My pleasure. And we'll see you again on HFO TV. Our entire office specializes in multifamily real estate, making HFO the largest multifamily brokerage in the Pacific Northwest. Your success is our passion. Build your legacy with HFO. Call 503-241-5541 or visit our website at hfore.com for more information.